Welcome to another Blue Monkey Forensics video. In a different video where I talked about terminals, consoles, and shells, I name dropped the program Tmux, and I got a number of inquiries to go into more detail, so here we are. In this video, we're going to discuss the basics of the Tmux terminal multiplexer program. If you spend a lot of time on the command line, then you know about jumping back and forth between terminal windows, typing commands on your own machine, or commands on a remote machine. Sometimes it's nice to be able to see multiple terminals at the same time on one screen. You may want to have a man page up in one window while you actually type the command in a second window. And then you might also want to have a third program running in a third window. Well, of course you can just manually line up the terminal windows, right? And, and resize them, but that's a pain. So Tmux can help with all of that. But wait, there's more. If you have ever started a process in a window, and then accidentally killed that window, you know about the pain in losing the process that was running. With Tmux, if a terminal that you are using closes accidentally, or on purpose, the terminal session is actually still active in the background, and you can rejoin that session with opening a new terminal. This also goes for network drop traffic. Once you have initiated a remote session via Tmux, even if the network kicks you off, the underlying session keeps running. For this video, I will be using the Parrot Security OS, which already has Tmux preloaded. And if you don't already have it preloaded like this Kane 13 machine, you can install it by doing an apt install. And you can type sudo apt install Tmux if you are on an Ubuntu or Debian machine. And for those using uh, Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat, etc., you can use the yum installer by doing sudo yum install tmux. For those using other distros, you can try the sudo pacman dash capital S lowercase y tmux. And for those using Mac OS, you can use brew by typing sudo brew install tmux. There are three concepts that you need to understand. Sessions, windows, and panes. At the top level, a session is useful to separate different work environments. For example, if you are working on different projects, you should probably use different sessions for each project. And then within each session, you can have multiple windows, which can run different jobs in parallel. And then lastly, the panes are just a way to divide a window up so that you can see multiple panes at the same time within one window. Let's start Tmux so you can see what I'm talking about. The way to start the server is to create a new session. So I'm going to type Tmux new dash session dash s and then give it a name. So I'm going to call it sesh zero. And so here, new session is the command for Tmux, right? So we were telling it we want to start a new session. And then the options is dash s to name the session. And we're going to name it sesh zero. Notice that there is something different in this terminal window now. First of all, we see that the screen has essentially cleared and our command prompt has moved to the top of the window. Second and probably more obvious is the green status bar that has appeared at the bottom of the terminal window. So let's break it down to see what we see here. Starting from the left, the first item in brackets is the session name, sesh0 in this case, because that's what we named it when we started the session. And the second item here says 0 colon bash star, which is the window number, right, 0. That's the first window. And then the name is bash, because that is what it is currently running or last running. And then by default, the window name will be the shell that was started. And if I decide to use another shell, like a regular born shell, I can just type sh. Notice the status window now reflects sh because I'm no longer running bash, I'm running sh. And then if I want to start another shell, like dash, I just type in dash. And then once again, notice the status changing to dash. Continuing on, going to the far right will be the name of the machine where the shell is active, along with the date and time of that machine. So in my case, my machine is named tmux-demo. And let's see how this will change if we SSH into another machine. So I'm going to go ahead and SSH into 
the uh, account named Blue Monkey Forensics on the machine named Parrot. So I'm going to type SSH Blue Monkey Forensics at Parrot. After I type in the password, I'm logged into that remote machine. So note the change in the status on the right-hand side. The status bar now reflects what appears to be part of the bash file. And if I type other commands like pwd or cd slash temp, notice the right portion of the status bar reflects the command typed and the name of that machine. Now let's check out the power of Tmux's sessioning capability. I'm going to start a program that is cracking passwords on this remote machine. So I'm going to do hashcat-m1000 hash.text-a and then question A, question A, question A eight times. So once we hit the enter key, we see that hashcat is running just fine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kill this window by clicking on the X over here and then hitting the confirmation. And so there, boom, that window is gone. If this was a normal terminal window that we did this in, that hashcat program will be killed. But not with Tmux. As I mentioned before, that session is still running. All right, so let's prove that I wasn't full of crap. Let's see what sessions are active. I can do Tmux list dash session, or you can do the short version of Tmux ls which for Linux folks will be pretty easy to remember. And so we see that there is one active session. And so what we can do is we can reattach to that active session by just typing tmux space a. And a is short for attach, or you can type out the whole word. So either tmux attach or tmux a. And we see that we are back in tmux, right? Because we see this status bar. And then we can also see that we are still in the Hashcat program and it's still running. And we can tell by getting a status which has progress since we healed the window. So that's amazing, right? You're running a process, the window dies, but yet you can reconnect to it and keep it going. All right, a new and important topic is that of key bindings. These key sequences allow us to do a lot of different things within Tmux. The way that this works is that we have to enter the binding key, which is set by default to control B. Then it's followed by another key that indicates the action you want to take. For example, we are within a Tmux session here, and you can tell by the status bar in the bottom of the terminal window, right? And say, I want to change the name of this session. I would start by using the binding key, which is control B, followed by the dollar sign. So notice that the status bar now changed to say rename session followed by the name of the session. So the dollar sign basically is the key to rename a session. I will go ahead and modify the name from sesh zero to session zero because sesh is just way too casual for me. So I'm gonna hit enter and there it is. Now it is changed to session zero instead of sesh zero. And because we're able to rename a session, you can pretty much deduce that we can have multiple sessions. So how do we get another session? Well, we can start by using the binding key of control B and then followed by colon new. Okay, so now you will see that we are in a new session because of the status on the far left says bracket one instead of bracket session zero. And the default naming is just the number of the session and the numbering starts from zero. So now that we have two sessions running, the natural question is how do I switch between these sessions, right? How do I get to the other one? How do I get back to the first one? One way is to detach from a session first, right? You do that by doing a control B and then D for detach. And now you see that we're no longer in Tmux as we don't see the status bar on the bottom. We're back in the terminal window that launched Tmux and we can see that in the last command line, it says detach from session one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a listing of our Tmux sessions by doing Tmux ls. We see that we have two sessions, session zero and session one. Now let's say we want to use the Tmux attach that we learned earlier to attach the session. But keep in mind that Tmux attach will just reattach to the last session, which may not be what you want. 
If you have multiple sessions running, you can specify the session name by adding a dash T for the target option, and then the name of the session. So in this case, I can do Tmux A for attach, and then dash T for target, and then one, because that is the name of session number one. So once we hit return, notice the status on the bottom, confirming that we are back in Tmux, and we, in fact, we are attached to session one. So detaching and reattaching is certainly one way of switching between sessions, but there is a better way, All right? We can go between the sessions by doing control B and then S for sessions. So basically here with this screen, we now see all the sessions are active, right? On the top half of the screen, we have session zero and session one, and you can use the up and down arrow keys to select the desired session that you want to attach to. And as you are using the up and down arrow keys, you notice that the bottom portion of the screen is a preview of the last command typed in that particular session. And once you have selected the session you want to be active, you just hit the enter key and you've got that session selected. Notice the status on the bottom will tell you the name of the session that you're in, right? So for us, it's gonna be either session zero or just the number one. And another way of switching between sessions is to just use control B and then the open parentheses or closing parentheses, All right? This will go to the previous session or the next session. So this might be a little faster. Next level down from sessions is windows and you can have multiple windows per session. The way you create a new window is to use control B and then the letter C for create. And notice that the status bar changed right on the bottom here. There now is an additional name for the new window. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a ping of Snapdrop, which is just another machine on my network. And now if we look at the status bar again, we see that there is zero colon bash, and then another one called one colon ping, and then it's got an asterisk next to it. So the word ping is there because I am running the ping command in this window. And then the star, the asterisk, means that this is the window that we are working in. That's the active window. And I can rename this second window by doing control B comma. Okay, so notice the status bar now says rename dash window. And I will rename this to win two, and then go ahead and kill the ping process. All right, so now let's take a look at how to switch windows. The way we switch focus to another window is by doing control B and then N and P for next and previous. And so it will just kind of go between the windows as you go next and previous. Obviously, if you have more than just two windows like we have right now, it would take a little longer to go through all the sequences. And notice that the status bar changes where the asterisk is located depending on which window is active. Okay, so let's create another window by doing control B, C for create. And then I'm gonna change its name to third win, right? So control B, comma, and then I'm gonna change the name to third win. Now let's say I have 10 windows. There is a much faster way to switch between windows. I can change windows by using the window number preceded by control B. So if I do control B and then followed by number like one, the focus was switched to window number one, which I named win two to make it even more confusing. And this may be confusing because the windows are numbers starting from zero, not one. So window number one is actually the second window that we created. That's why I called it win two. If I do control B and then S for session again, I can see the listing of sessions. Notice that there is a plus symbol okay, on the line and you can use your right arrow to expand that session to see all the windows within. So here we see that this session has three windows with their respective names and you can see the active one, right? The one with the asterisk and then the last active, which is the one that has the dash symbol. And conversely, you can use the left arrow to contract the sessions and you can also select windows using this method, right? Using, once you expand it out, you can use your up and down arrows to select which window you wanna to go to. 
And you can also do control B and then W for window. This will pretty much give you the same view and controls for sessions and windows. So we just looked at windows and they're cool and all because you can run things in parallel in different windows. But the problem is that I can only see one window at a time, right? So now comes the fun part, panes. Panes allow you to have multiple viewable spaces in one window. So let's just say, for example, that I'm going to run a command to crack some passwords in, in my window here, right? So while it's running, I want to do something else, but I want to keep an eye on this cracking process, right? So this is where the beauty of creating a second pane comes in. This way I can work on two different things at the same time and watch both. To create another pane, I can either split the screen in half vertically or horizontally. Let's start with a horizontal split. I would type control B and then double quotes. Now we can see that the screen is split into two halves, top and bottom half. And you can see the cursor light up in the pane that has the focus. And to switch focus to the other pane, we can do control B and then up arrow or down arrow, right? Whichever direction you want to go. And now that I'm in the lower pane, I am going to run the history command just to fill the screen with some info, All right? Here we go, history. And now let's say that I want to do something else. So I want to open up another pane. And this time I'm going to split the lower window into two halves, left and right. So I can do control B percent, right? So percent will basically split the current window, right? The one that's in focus into half, left and right halves. And again, to change focus to another pane, we can use control B and then the arrow key direction that points to where I want to go. So I can do control B and then up arrow, control B and then down arrow, control B to left, right, so forth. All right, another way of moving around is to get the pane index number. And I can do that by doing control B and then Q. And so now we see giant numbers appear over each pane indicating the respective pane index number. The red number indicates the pane in focus. So now that we can use the index number to shift focus, I can just type control B and then Q and then the number. So example two. And now we see the blinking cursor in pane number two. And so while here, I'm going to do an LS-A to see what is in this folder. They all go zooming off the screen due to the real estate for this pane. But I can do something about that by using the zoom feature by just typing control B and then Z for zoom. And now you'll be zoomed into that particular pane, right? So I can see more of the output because of the bigger real estate. And notice that the status bar will be marked with a Z or Z, depending where you live, to indicate that we are zoomed in. And you can unzoom by just doing the control B and then Z or Z again. So there's the basics for Tmux, the terminal multiplexer that allows users to interact with multiple terminals at once. You can run it locally or remotely. Uh, you're able to split windows into panes, which is awesome for productivity. And the way that sessions persist beyond network disconnects or accidental disconnects is huge. There is so much more to Tmux as we've only scratched the surface. Much like VI or Vim, there is a command mode where you can enter commands. And there is a config file where you can customize your experience. Just so much more to explore. Hope this was useful to you. For more videos with Linux tips and tricks, make sure you watch these videos here. Click on the blue monkey to subscribe so that I get more mana points. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.